Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear friends, we are continuing our discussion on short period mode and you know what exactly we are talking now is about approximation. Why we are doing this? We want to get a simplified equation so that some numbers, some parameters you can identify which will help us in analyzing the dynamic stability of an airplane. In this short period approximation, this is important, this is the approximation because you know that the exact is here, this is exact. Okay. You have to find the roots of this equation and generally for business type aircraft, conventional aircraft, you will find that it has two complex pair of complex conjugates and in one complex conjugate pair we find that the real part is largely negative, large negative compared to the other conjugate pair and we try to understand the physics behind it and we know now that the airplane in longitudinal mode can get excited primarily in short period like it just oscillates like this and come back to the equilibrium in a very short time and what is the assumption that during this short time total velocity remain constant. That means, the perturb du is 0. So, one approximation is perturb du is 0 right? and this understanding will help us in making this matrix in a reduced order form. What we did was since the perturb u is 0 that means, this equation x minus x u this into u this into this, this into this equal to x delta e that is a superfluous equation because there is no change. So, we are dropping this equation. Right. Second thing we realize since u of s this perturbed u is 0. So, this multiplied by this becomes 0, this multiplied by this becomes 0. So, we also delete this. Okay. Clear? See this into this this into this makes no sense. So, we also delete this part of the matrix. And finally, we have a 2 by 2 matrix of this form, but be careful we have assumed z alpha dot z q theta 1 that is airplane at theta pitch angle is 0 and we have also put m t alpha equal to 0, but generally you can understand that m t alpha is not 0, but no problem we know here m alpha and m t alpha. So, this m t alpha the value if you know you can be clubbed into m alpha. So, for us interpretation could be m alpha has both the component because of aerodynamic moment as well as because of moment due to thrust as a function of alpha or as a variant of alpha in a sense how does it change with alpha. So, this becomes a very very simple matrix to handle and from there we found out what is the omega and short period through which we got through the approximation, the damping ratio through this approximation we got, then we compared with the exact solution and we found for this airplane values are fairly close and we say generally short period approximation is a good approximation. Now, coming back to the other mode in which the airplane generally get excited in longitudinal plane is one is short period like this, another is it can go like this and then damp out. It is a long period and that is called fugoid mode. So, we will be now talking about fugoid mode. So, let me erase this out. So, you are talking about long period mode or fugoid 
Again, the key word is approximation. In the long period mode, we something like this. You get excited like this and then come back to equilibrium. It is a not a very good, but okay, okay approximation if you assume the alpha remain constant. That means perturbed alpha is zero. It's not a good approximation for your information, but okay, it's a classical approach, and you will see that this also will give us some very relevant insight to understand the longitudinal dynamics of an airplane, right? So the moment I talk about perturbed alpha is 0, this is perturbed, right? or I say alpha total is constant and that is why when I draw it like this, although very approximate, if I draw it like this as if the airplane is going like this, so there is no change in angle of attack. I repeat, this is not a very good approximation, but okay. So if I assume that alpha perturbed is zero because alpha total is constant, then we can again see how best we can simplify this matrix, and that is exactly what we will be doing now. Let us watch out. So let me first write this matrix, then I will explain this is S minus X U minus x t u and then g and minus x alpha or minus z u and minus u on s and here it is u of s by delta e of s and here theta of s by delta e of s this is equal to x delta e and this is z delta i. And you could see that I can always assume z q i n equal to theta 1 equal to 0. I will put another condition also. Let us see how we have got this. Since alpha perturb, this is alpha perturb, this is 0. So, I have got this one, this into alpha, second so when I do this, this into alpha again will come, this into alpha, this will also come. Right? So, then this column, this one I will delete. Do you see what I am saying? If I open this matrix, this will be this term into this term plus this term into this term plus this term into this term. Right? Now, since alpha perturbed is 0, so, x alpha into alpha s, s u minus z, all, all, z alpha dot minus z alpha into alpha of s, this one into theta of uh, theta, uh, this one into alpha of s. Again, I repeat, x alpha into alpha of s, s u one minus z alpha dot minus z alpha into alpha of s. Then again, m alpha dot into s plus m alpha into alpha of s. This will vanish. So, I am dropping this. Also, please understand this third equation. This is related to moment coming about the y axis m alpha, right. But here you are assuming the airplane is going like this. So, this oscillation is not that dominating, right. Moment about the y axis is not that dominating because it is going like this, okay. So, as a first approximation. I will, I am also saying this man is out, which is have it is also apparently superfluous. Right. So then I am left with this goes, this goes. So what I am left with? I am left with this term, this term, this term, and this term. Right? That is exactly you find here S minus X U minus X T U and for G cos theta. 1, we are assuming theta 1 equal to 0. So, 
so this is g is here and for here minus zu minus zu is here and if you see here zq we have assumed to be 0 theta 1 is 0 so only minus u 1 s and that is exactly here right let me repeat again when I am talking about fugoid what I am assuming I am assuming if this is the fugoid the airplane is actually through approximation right it may not be very accurate it is going like so at each point alpha remaining constant or the perturbed alpha is 0. The consequence of that when I multiply these two matrices the second term x alpha will be multiplied by alpha of s here the second term this one multiplied by alpha of s here the second term this multiplied with alpha of s right all will vanish because perturbed alpha is 0. Second thing the third equation which was here through m delta e this is basically representing the pitching moment about the y axis of the airplane. So, this sort of a motion we are talking about, but actually we are approximating the fugoid mode it is not this oscillation is not dominating this is dominating right. So, not much of this oscillation not much of moment about y axis. So, we are saying this is also superfluous. So, we are deleting that ok this is an approximation right. By doing this and putting additional conditions z q equal to theta y and equal to 0 we get this simplified version. Also we can do one thing in practice x delta e we can assume it is also negligible. So, x delta e equal to 0. So, I put it here 0 please understand those approximations what we are doing ok. Now, now let us handle this 2 by 2 matrix and I can write u of s by delta u of s by using Cramer rule okay, this as z delta e into g divided by u 1 s square minus x u s minus z u by u 1 into g. Similarly, theta of s by delta e of s is given as z delta e into s minus x u divided by minus u 1 s square minus x u s minus z u by u 1 g. Please note here there is x u is sitting here and now I am writing only x u here. So, you can interpret this x u if you are taking thrust into account this x u is nothing but x u because of aerodynamic plus or plus x t u that means the thrust effect is been absorbed in x u that is why I was telling you if you know how to handle the aerodynamic part then thrust part gets added. So, it is nothing extra you do ok. So, that should be very very clear to your mind. Now, if I see this what do you call this u of s by delta u of s or theta of s by delta u of s this is these are called transfer function. That is if I draw a block diagram I will say I am giving input delta e of s I am getting output u of s what is this u u is the perturbed u right do not lose the inside this is perturbed u. So, ideally this would be small u right and what is sits inside this box is this transfer function ok transfer function that is if I want to know what is u of s once I know the transfer function this which is primarily decided by the aerodynamic dimensional derivatives right and the flight condition if I know this transfer function I have to simply multiply by delta e of s to get u of s in frequency domain 
and there are numerical techniques to convert from frequency domain to time domain. So, we say inverse Fourier transform. Right? Fine. Once we understand this, what is our aim? Our aim is to ask a question whether the fugoid mode is dynamically stable or not. So, how do I check? I again follow the approach which we have followed for short period approximation. Our aim is to find or to answer a question whether the fugoid mode is dynamically stable or not. And you know the characteristic equation is x square minus x u s minus z u by u 1 into g equal to 0. And remember the beauty of initially understanding second order system. So, again this is a second order system and we know standard rotation for second order system using natural frequency and damping ratio. So, I compare these two and find out omega n fugoid p for fugoid as minus z u by u 1 into g. Right? Similarly, because this is omega n square, this is equal to this. Similar 2 zeta omega n is minus x u. So, zeta p I find it as minus x u by 2 omega fugoid. As simple as that, omega n will be under root of this and 2 zeta omega n equal to minus x u. So, from there I find the expression for natural frequency fugoid and damping ratio fugoid. Okay. And if I want to calculate for an airplane, I know z u, I know the expression of z u, I know the expression of x u, I can easily find out natural frequency, I can easily find out damping ratio. Okay. If we do this for the example airplane which we are doing, then this value will come omega n fugoid will come around 0 0.082 radian per second and zeta p will come as 0 0.046 or 0 0.046. But if you recall the exact values were exact values we have earlier computed by solving a s 4 plus b s q plus c s square plus d s plus e equal to 0 those values were this was 0 0.091 and this was 0 0.076 or 0 0.076 0 0.91. Now, you could see natural frequency estimation through approximate method this is approximate for Fugoid approximation this is ok this is a bit close, but as far as damping ratio is concerned this is not a really the value which we would have liked. And that is why from the beginning I am telling you that Fugard approximation is not a very, very good approximation, but it still it has got some additional features which we must know which will help us to design an aircraft or analyze an aircraft dynamics. Okay. So, with that understanding now we will do a little bit of we will play around these two expression and see what are the best information we can get out of these expressions. Let us take omega n p. Omega n p fugoid is under root minus z u g by u 1. You know the expression of z u. So, I can substitute that expression here. So, we will get it is something like this g by u 1 to q 1 s c l u plus 2 C L 1 divided by m u 1. What I have done g by u 1 is this one and this is the expression of z u where there was a minus sign. So, minus minus can become plus. So, I get an expression like this. Okay. Now, I do further approximation I say C L u is negligible. You remember what is C L u? C L u was C L u was 
m into dcl by dm right, especially for low speed this value is very very small or zero up to 0 0.6 or 0.7 Mach number. So, we are assuming that this value is zero then what we have is omega n fugoid equal to so this man goes out. So, we will have the expression as roughly rho g s by m into C L 1, where suddenly it becomes so simple, because remember that we have assumed C L u less than less than C L 1 or initially I was talking about 0, uh, the better way of handling this is you can say ok, even if it is supersonic case high speed case C L u you will not be 0. So, I said ok, my approximation says in any case C L u will be much less than compared to C L 1. So, I neglect this. So, both way you could see this right. Second statement is better way of handling this situation. Also you know that C L 1 equal to m g by q 1 s, because this comes from lift equal to weight that is our steady state. Okay. So, those two information we will use q 1 s by m g is here. Okay. So, if I now substitute this here, then I get omega n p r rho g s by m into C L 1. Right. And now, if I further see this, we substitute this C L 1 equal to m g by q 1 s, then you can show that omega n fugoid will approximately come like g by u 1 root 2. Please do it yourself, you have to just substitute here. Only understanding is C L u is less compared to C L 1 and C L 1 is nothing but m g by half rho v square s which is q 1 s at steady state. If we substitute this, you can easily show that omega n p will be approximately g by u 1 root 2. So, what is the message for fugoid frequency or natural frequency omega n p goes inversely with u 1. So, as the speed is increased this frequency goes on decreasing or reverse way if the speed is low this fugoid frequency is large for gliders and all for gliders speed is not that high right this fugoid frequency has a tendency to be little larger and that is the fun you have. You can easily excite the fugoid and really enjoy the fugoid mode. Now, story does not end here. Now, let us see zeta p fugoid damping which by expression is minus x u by 2 omega n p and again I substitute the value of expression for x u and all. So, I will get q 1 s by 2 m u 1 to omega n p and here I put c d u plus 2 c d 1. Right. I am not taking the thrust effect, please understand I am not taking, I am taking c t c t x u identically equal to 0 and c t x 1 is also not considered. Again we will be using this concept C L 1 is m g by q 1 s and, and set it inside the expression of omega n p also and then we will we can easily show if I substitute this zeta p approximate will come as C d u plus 2 C d 1 by 2 C L 1 root 2. What do you have to do to get this expression is you have to put omega n p expression which is here approximate expression you have to use C L 1 equal to m g by q 1 s and then you can modify this expression zeta p equal to C d u plus 2 C d 1 by 2 C L 1 root 2 if zeta p equal to C d u plus 2 C d 1 by 2 
C L 1 root 2. What next I should do as a designer to get some first hand feel? I'll immediately see C D U will be less compared to 2 C D 1 number 1. I can also think at subsonic speed C D U will be almost 0. The expression for damping ratio of fugoid is minus x u by 2 omega n p and we will put substitute the expression of x u here and then you get the expression for zeta p as this. We are aware C L 1 is m g by q 1 s because it has come from lift equal to weight at steady state at the cruise. So, if I substitute this then I get the expression zeta p equal to C D u plus 2 C D 1 by 2 C L 1 root 2 and for subsonic case, subsonic case, low speed case let us say C D u can be approximately 0. So, we have now zeta p here 2 C D 1 by 2 root 2 C L 1 and you could see that this implies zeta p is inversely proportional to C L by C D evaluated at steady states that is C L 1 by C D 1. This is extremely important. Please understand this expression is when no thrust we are mostly talking about the gliding flight. Okay. What is the meaning of this? If C L by C D is very large especially for gliders they are very large they are order of 30s. So, that means the fuga damping is very very low right. and that is where you enjoy gliding. You excite the fugoid, it will go on doing this long period for longer time right. and you enjoy the flight. So, this is very very important as far as gliding is concerned and you should understand that as you go on increasing C L by C D the fuga damping goes on reducing right. and this is a case for no thrust case and mostly very very relevant for gliding flight and we all know by flying also that gliders we enjoy the gliding flight because we want to enjoy the fugoid mode and enjoy this uh, motion right. So, this was a closer look into fugoid approximation and short period approximation we want to avoid using those huge matrix we found 2 by 2 matrix we will use and we got some relevant information in short period mode and fugoid mode through approximations. These are very very handy when you try to freeze initial dimension for designing an aircraft okay. and you will see that how we use it in our design course will be coming next and that time you will appreciate why we are stressing so much time on this. So, this is up to the longitudinal mode. Next, now we have to go for lateral directional mode. Thank you very much.